Good morning, Sunday morning live, everybody. Drinking coffee after a long day. Um, I really didn't have anything super uh, put together for the Sunday, which I don't really do all the time. I just, I did a lot of videos yesterday, multitasking. So you're going to see like last night, a super thought process regarding and deconstructing spirituality and how that really manifests and what it really means. And so it's interesting this morning, I, uh, I got an email from somebody that saw my old Dr. Phil video and I was explaining that reproduction comes from only a man and a woman type of thing. And I really since have addressed that whole societal construct and the word man and the word woman is a word that describes and characterizes um, what we think is and explains who bears a baby and who can like what is supposed to be normal type of thing. Okay. And we've been taught so many things in our society, what is right and what is wrong. And we have created social constructs around it. And so anyone that goes outside of a social construct is then deemed abnormal. So anyways, so I've obviously since uh, changed my mind on that. And I'm not thinking from the perspective of the I don't say labels, but of the words that describe or characterize a specific human in our society representing certain characteristics of reproduction. Everybody is now really, when you think about it, it's everything is based upon a biological construct. And so anyways, this email, this person was asking me to, to clarify about that and about overpopulation. And I just I gave her a really good articulate answer. And then I actually apologized too, because in the middle of my um, research process, you have to go and dissect all the social constructs, all of the um, societal constructs, which is the same thing. I was deconstructing the biological constructs, deconstructing the elemental constructs, and addressing it. And finally, it came down to, yes, everything is based upon elemental and a biological construct. And that's it. And that... Um, Really, when you think about it, the spirit, I'm going to bring the spirit into this since it's Sunday and I've been dealing with like the spirit type of revelations the last couple of days is that when the spirit is programmed in a specific way, because what I've deemed the spirit is, is basically your hormones. It is what is most present based upon your biochemistry. And if you were taught in a society and you have a particular biochemistry with certain things present, more present, more hormones are present than the others, it then creates a belief system. When you have a belief system, a belief system is constructed of rules. So when you have these specific rules, it doesn't mean that it's really truly the truth in nature. It just means that you have an explanation of why nature you characterize or yeah, you have an explanation of why nature does what it does. You've created a story around it. And I think that's what really what spirituality is, is when you have a specific biological process that creates stories and fills in the blanks of, of different types of series of events. Okay. Because you can have like one event and 10 different renditions of that event. And that's based upon each individual biochemistry and their culture and their background and their belief system. So that's essentially how our, how society, every society has constructed their rules or viewpoints, what is normal, what is abnormal. So anyways, I didn't go into that depth when I returned the email, when I replied back to the email, but I did apologize. I did say that, you know, I do talk about, I, I don't really say that I'm, I don't know if I'm going to totally express about overpopulation in my book, 
I don't think we're overpopulated. I think that we're not really uh, using our resources correctly and we're not guiding reproduction carefully. So we are definitely um, consuming more than we're producing. And so now our society and our government is trying to now bring back biodiversity and bring and allowance from places that are not allowed to grow to grow and, and moving different people and different things so that way we can allow things on earth to, to do what it needs to do and then yes we also make mistakes too because we're we're reacting from events that may be out of our control or somebody's short or somebody's um shortcuts and so just like the exxon valdez okay the oil spilling or we have nuclear reactors that haven't been maintained and then there's an earthquake, okay? So we'll have upsets of homeostasis. And so yes, the, our reactions could potentially kind of upset the homeostasis for a certain amount of time. Doesn't mean it's forever. It just means that now we have kind of a dead zone until nature brings things back into balance. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. So anyways, I didn't go into that detail either in the email, but I was just saying, hey, you know, th this is what my thought process was last year and this is what it is now today and da da da. And so she replied back, which was like within the last like hour, she, she replied back when like, wow, I'm really surprised that you apologize. <laughs> and I, you know, am um, very happy that you clarified. And I'm just, you know, I don't mean to come off very, very intense, but I am just a triggered teenager. I'm like, wow, a very articulate teenager that wanted to know what was going on inside of my head. I wasn't triggered because she, she, she didn't trigger me with any, any of her words. She was just really wanting to know where I'm coming from. And I was like, you know what? This person wants to know where my head's at. I'll give her where my head's at. Usually I don't respond to emails when people are like, oh my God, you think this? And then they're just like all attacking. And I know like anything I say is just not going to land. So, but this person really, you know, showed me that she just, she cared enough for me to know and she didn't attack me because I'm going through an evolution process and you guys, your, um, your mind is going to change. When you change your biochemistry, your mind, your belief system, a lot of what you think is like true is going to change. And that's very scary when your reality changes because your biochemistry changes. It's scary and it's unpredictable because there's at least when you have a specific society that has the social constructs and all of that, and then they, it um, perpetuates your current state of your hormones. Things are predictable. Predictable is safe. I mean, there. I like predictability too. You have to have a certain amount of predictability in order to just kind of survive in our society and live. However, the social constructs in our society do have the ability to change. And a belief system in our society that as long as everyone believes that life is really the um, the point of it, not death, then your belief systems around why life and death exist are going to change. And that's one of the scary things, like, like last night I pointed out, that what is very scary for people is when death isn't part of the spiritual equation. Because, yeah, religions and spirituality have been predicated around the whole death process. And so now I'm saying, well, what is, what is spirituality when you live an indefinite life? Because you're not looking at the afterlife. You're not looking at the other side or another plane of existence. And you're going to have unstable emotions and it'll be based upon the environment. So if your environment and your internal environment and your external environment, because here's the thing. You can be reactive to your environment, which is fine, because you need to be. It just depends. It's like a balance, because you have an internal universe, internal environment, and then you have an external environment, inter external universe, and they have to live symbiotically with each other, balancing each other out. And so why we have so much cancer disease and chronic illness is because the internal environment in your body and the external universe is not living symbiotically together, and that's where you have conflict or cancer disease, chronic illness, or wars, or death and chaos. Okay, so what J Juice is attempting to do is to balance out your internal universe and environment so you can adapt to your external universe and environment until either one is just too extreme that it's going to then cancel each other out. Okay, so it's living symbiotically with the external universe 
with your internal universe. And then the spirituality is then, what is that? That's your hormones. You're not going to have now this whole story around your hormones and how it manifests. You're not going to have a story around what is normal in our society. All of that is going to go to the wayside because it's going to be irrelevant in the scheme of things. So anyways, that's really deep for Sunday right now. Then I'm, And I'm just like, been talking to you guys the last couple of days and a lot of stuff going on. So I'm just going to get off right now, like get off the of Facebook live right now and just hang out with my husband because he had a busy day. So did I yesterday, this whole weekend, it's just been insane. Last weekend was very, very busy. So, um, so you guys just enjoy, watch my, my last videos like yesterday and, um, and just really come from the point of understanding where I'm coming from as far as the J juice, because this whole process of peeling back the layers of the body, mind, and spirit is super intense. And it's going to, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks when you finally are able to tap into the spiritual healing, because where does the spirit comes from? It comes from the body and the mind. Okay. And then the spirit is in how your body reflects back the universe that you're in, the environment that you're in. And so, yeah. All right. You guys have a great day. I'll see you guys. I'll see you probably tomorrow. And uh, I'll be a bit more, I'll have more of, a, of an organized approach. Okay. Bye-bye.